the, the best part about it was we would just take chances because the, the risks were pretty low and the creators were taking the risk with us. You had nothing to lose. And, and Well, there was something to lose. <laughs> don't, 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 don't kid yourself. <laughs> uh, uh, but but we, we, we had a chance to try a lot of stuff. And, and because we were small and scrappy, uh, we could do it. And that, to me, was one of the things I missed the most because we had, you know, uh, as I've gone into other companies, you don't have green light. Being able to green light something new is horrendously difficult and you have to drag yourself across broken glass to get it done yeah, yeah. whereas we we were green lighting you know between 15 and 30 things every month yeah that, that was a new book wow. or a new idea or or do, or going after a certain license or whatever it is and you get enormously spoiled i, I thought that was kind of common because mm -hmm. i got we started you got to do it as right young men right as, as, as super 20 young 20 men. Something year old men yeah right out of college we got a chance to do that and and it's just I, I desperately missed that part. It was the, one of the greatest parts ever was just deciding what we were going to do at breakfast, which is what we did right. every yeah. week. Yeah, right? we, once, once a week we would sit down. But one of, the, one of the things that seems to get lost in, in the sands of time and gets buried under how much success we had with the Ultraverse and with Bravura is that um, even the, the books we took chances on because we had Tom Mason and we had Chris and we had me, we could sell – probably 30 to 40 percent more copies of a given title than our competitors mm. just because we were really really smart about the way we marketed it, yeah. both to the fans and to the retailers and so while we were taking risks um the risk they were calculated the calculated ri the, ra the risks were lowered because we knew that our marketing department could squeeze an extra thousand or two thousand or three thousand dollars out of a property sometimes that made all the difference yeah. and we could we could figure out we we were very good at sitting around the table and saying how much do we think we're going to sell for the we're doing four issue miniseries for the first four issues we could tell you almost within 300 copies how much it would be yep. depending wow. on what it was yeah. and we were largely correct yep you know um and so that also helped a lot so we, we could be more um uh, specific in terms of what we were publishing. Remember the first book we did that sold more than thirty thousand copies? Was it? No, it wasn't Robotech, right? Nope. We even made T-shirts to celebrate. <sighs> Which was it? Captain Harlock. That's right. It was Harlock. interesting. It was Harlock. Hmm. Yeah. We're talking about a lot of success and a lot of uh, up-and-coming characters and stuff. What just missed the mark? Do you think? Lots of stuff missed. Yeah. The mark. Hmm. Almost everything we published, you know, we had we had to we had to. Almost everything we published didn't go as high as we wanted it to go, or, mm -hmm. as, or what we thought it would do. And there were some that were heartbreakers that we thought that we thought, oh, this has got everything. The creative's got a great, it's a great creative idea. It's the art is great, and it just for whatever reason didn't connect with the audience, especially when we did stuff that was away from core comic book stuff, okay, or, or away from a license. So maybe like more stuff that's outside yeah. of the ultra. We had we had the... space opera kinds of stuff. We did okay. science fiction based on. You know, uh, novels like the Harry Harrison novels yeah. and things like that. Larry Niven Retief, novels. Retief, right? Yeah, we did Retief. We did a lot of different stuff, and and some of it was just the fan base was either couldn't find comics or it was just too small mm. to to generate ongoing. Uh, but also remember, revenue. stuff like the Men in Black never sold. Yeah. We did two mini series of the Men in Black, and not one of them sold over nine thousand copies. Yeah, really? Yeah. Wow. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so the idea that that was going to become, I mean, that that movie actually changed comic book movies, right? Because it did it did so well. Yeah. And it, it came it, from a property it, that did nothing. It activated, yeah. it activated it a lot, a lot more, learn. right? Yeah. So they, so the movie the, uh, movie uh, companies started putting a lot more money into comic book properties then, like, after that. You had the mask, um, and then uh, the ill-fated uh, barbed wire. Yeah, barbed wire. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but but, but, but both the mask and the barbed wire sold so a lot, copies, a lot more, more copies. copies. I mean, the, the movie black, company right. could definitely say. Ooh, we got a built-in audience here. Right. Yeah. There was no built-in audience on the Men in Black. So, I mean, something maybe like a conspiracy theorists out there who knew about the Men in Black. No, <laughs> the Men in Black. Once the uh, once the comic was, you know, once that was out and stuff, I, I'm not sure how that worked. Did someone approach the the creators of that series? No, we, we had a deal with uh, which which uh, was the was it? Um, I want to say. It was Richard Donner's company, wasn't it? Are you you're talking about the, the licensing company? No, so we had, we, yeah, we had a, we had a, a, a deal with um, one of the uh, like it wasn't ICM, it was one of the it was one of the big uh, big agencies, yeah. big agencies, CAA, William Morris. Okay. Yeah. yeah, William Morris, William Morris, yeah. So it was William Morris, and we had all of our books. We actually have a we had a actually a printed catalog. Yeah, really. That yeah, there was IP. We had you'd have three separate IPs on every page, and there was 
it's probably 20 or 30 pages. Yeah. Wow. And wow. like, so, you want to come to us for properties? So Look at so all they, the stuff you can buy. They kind of picked one, and then they, they got excited about Men in Black. But it wasn't like we said, oh, Men in Black's going to be what it is, and we're going to go. Right. Or, or that someone came out of the blue and said, hey, this Men in Black idea. It was, it was really like. you guys like, really just kind of caught off guard when they were like, yeah, Men in Black. And you're like, really? That's like. Well, we loved everything what? we did. We wouldn't have published yeah. it if we didn't love it. So, right. But, but I mean, but, like, something but it was like that, that sold so little. And right. It wasn't, it, was, radar. it wasn't a success. It wasn't a huge success in our field so they didn't have a built-in audience mm-hmm. so the fact that the concept was so strong that they wanted just to grab the concept was great and we were like well, okay well let's we think the concept's great too let's see if we can find an audience for it right, then, but they probably paid more for the license that we made oh, publishing yeah. all six issues for sure they did <laughs> but 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 to be fair to them they executed that concept with uh oh, with it, brilliance yeah it goes right. beyond anything way that was beyond in the what comics was, what was in there so they took that concept fledged took the, the concept before, and, right. and built it out uh it was, a, it was a perfect storm of uh, a great, perfect cast, uh, right. a great director, um, you know, somebody that, that believed in them and in the property, and it was just, everything just kind of came Also, together. an upcoming also, star X-Files. that wasn't a star yet. Right, Will Smith. Yeah. Will Smith, that was... Mm-hmm. that. And also, was, the X-Files TV yeah. show was on, so that might have helped, too. You know, people were kind of in sure. aliens yep. and yep. Yep. things like yeah. that. Men in black. And Independence were, Day, it came out the year before. Yeah. So, you know, I think, I think it may have been a perfect storm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. that was smart. Grabbing Will Smith when they <coughs> did right right around that time was just yep. perfect. Um, but we, uh, we, we love the, the Ultraverse and uh, all of the characters. And the, the purchase then took place a little bit later down the line where Marvel, it was, it was originally DC, right, that was, it was very interested in yeah, purchasing. Yeah, we, we were way down the road in terms of yeah. um, negotiating with DC. Yeah. And Warner Brothers, yeah. And then Marvel was just like, we, we can't have that. I, I got, uh, I'm got. i sitting in my office, and the I get the intercom goes, Dave, it's Terry Stewart on the phone. I'm like, oh. The president of Marvel. That, that, mm-hmm. that, that, that's interesting. Let me let me see what this is all about. And I pick it up. I'm like, hi, Terry, how are you? And he goes, fine. <laughs> I understand you're negotiating with DC to sell the company. I said, uh, I can't confirm or deny. He goes, is that a done deal? I said, no, it's not. And then they made it that, happen fast. They made it happen fast. So they basically, kind of made it, they gave you a Godfather deal, an offer you couldn't refuse. Well, it wasn't quite that simple. <laughs> yeah. well, one of the things Marvel was willing to go very quickly mm. and, and wanted to. DC, like now. Well, well DC was part of Warner, 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 It was Warner was Brothers. It was, yeah, it wasn't yeah. really DC. We we were we had a great relationship with DC. Yeah. Frankly, it was the Warner Brothers higher up who were going to write the check that were yeah more fastidious about their due diligence. Mm. That makes sense. DC's always seem to be the ones that kind of, that, that are Dragon a little movie. behind sometimes, but it's because primarily probably Warner Brothers. In Warner Warner you can see it in the, in the movies, yeah. you know, even uh, Warner Brothers. It's just, they got it's a, a different culture. A different yeah. culture. Yeah. Completely different. Where culture. Disney and Marvel, they seem to have a little more autonomy. Okay, do, you want, do what you can as long as you're yeah. doing it right. You because know? Marvel had the the formula set up. Yes. And it was working. Yes. And Disney's like, well, why, why, why mess with that? it? Right? Why yeah. mess with that formula? So what I'm thinking is, let's say, for example, Disney now, since they have uh, acquired the rights to Marvel Comics, which acquired the rights to Malibu um, and the Ultra first um what do you think uh if they were to say we're going to make a movie what character or what comic do you think would make prime. the perfect prime prime's prime's prime. Prime. easily the most prime sellable, is still relevant it'd be a great the character. most sellable for high concept Teenage do you yeah. think easy though, to translate character idea do you think though with the the, the marketing and the, and the production of shazam that would maybe Step on De- their toes. Depends. A bit, depends right? on. De- depends on how you approach it. It and also de- depends on how well it does too. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Second behind that, I would say is firearm, because you can do what Marvel's doing with New Mutants, just like play against type. I feel like that's almost a TV show. Right, but you could you know you could yeah. create this yeah. you could create this hero case would be a cool TV that show. doesn't have any powers that basically does nothing but deal with superpower. Problems all the time, right? Right. And now, because of the ubiquitousness of superhero movies, now you can play against it the same way we did with the Ultraverse. The Strangers would also be an interesting one because it's a a great high concept, I think. And you Mm -hmm. can start there from the beginning and see these kind of characters emerge from this this one big event that happens. As long as they call one of the characters Adam Bob, I'm totally in. (laughs) I think Hard Case would be good on Netflix or Amazon TV. That'd be a cool little series. Sure, yeah. 
I mean, they're great. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot there in the Ultraverse that if they did took the same approach they've been taking with the Marvel stuff and taking the best of, and and really you know bringing that out with with great creative talent, uh, there'd be some some great assets I think to be built yeah. out of the Ultraverse. A Amazon <laughs> could, yeah, could do this. a deal. Yeah, yeah, we talked about because we've always talked about Amazon doing a deal with uh, with DC, you know, Warner Brothers on doing uh, like Dead Man. Or, yeah, yeah, just sure. like dark, just like dark yeah. characters. We were thought right. it'd be we perfect. Were, Zatanna and like their own series, and then build and culminate in a Justice League Dark series. We've been talking about that for ages, um, but I think it would also be cool if they did something with the Ultra Force and they introduced, you know, a limited, you know, eight episode run or yes. something, and did all these characters and stuff. We just nerd out over this stuff oh, all yeah. the time. <laughs> <laughs> Us too. <laughs> it, it never ends. Now, hopefully, one day they'll give you guys another cut of, uh, of, the, of the pie if they ever do turn these into TV series. They would kind of have to. Yeah, it's in the it's in the contract. <laughs> so, so. Good. yeah, that's, that's good. Um, another I'm one. I'm forward to my check for a dollar fifty. <laughs> <laughs> a little residual there. Another one I thought would be really good because you mentioned firearm, and that's one I had kind of highlighted that I thought would make a good one. Um, Mantra, I, I think, is yeah. something that that's really unique. Very set apart from from anything else. I can, honestly, I can think of. I don't. I don't know if I can think of any other character. It's very unique, and especially this time and age, this day and age we live yeah. with transgendered issues, transsexual issues. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, highly it, relevant. Now. Highly relevant. Yeah, yeah. highly relevant. You, you have a, a man, you know, living in the, the body of a, of a woman, so to speak. It's very, uh, very unique, very creative character. Um, so I think that would make another really yeah. great credit to Mike Barr. Yep. Oh, yeah, yes, on, absolutely. On, on, that, on, yeah. the, on Mantra. Yeah, he did all the heavy lifting on Mantra. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the run that came, uh, it was also uh, very creator-owned, independent. It was the, the it's called the Bravara. Bravura. Bravura. I never could pronounce that right. <laughs> One of the problems with our, <laughs> as, with well, our as, marketing. <laughs> as a kid, when I lock in on a name, that's the way I... I pronounce it for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah, sure Submariner, anyone? Uh, you know what's funny? Yeah. I used to call it that. That's I did yeah. too. When I first saw the and, Submariner, it was always a Submariner. And Magneto to me was Magneto. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so you had this unique uh, world <coughs> in this uh, in this uh, line of comic books, and you had what? I was uh, wasn't it uh, Barry Windsor Smith? Was uh, in there? Barry, no. Barry was in the Ultraverse, so he okay. he uh, was the the artist and co-creator on Rune. Rune, that's right. Yeah, and uh, who who did the what was the character breed? That was Jim Starlin. Jim, Jim Starlin. Starlin. Oh man, that's we right. love some Jim Starlin, yeah. and, and that guy's getting a lot of credit now. That yeah. breed series was intense, and they had a lot of. And I remember they had a lot of special. You know, you collected this, you could get this cover or that cover, or this cover. Um, but I, I did manage to, over the years, I grabbed a few uh, covers and issues. I got a, uh, here, a Mortal Kombat uh, Blood and Thunder limited edition gold cover. Ah, Patrick Rolo cover. Ooh, yeah. huh? <laughs> That's another guy that I thought he was going to be, I thought that guy was going to be huge. And of course, I have uh, Strike Back the right. hunt for Nikita. That's another book that should have done way, way better than it did. That's a Kevin Maguire oh. book, of all things. A lot of it, I think, was timing. Yeah, of, sure. Of when we ended up, if we had done it a year earlier, I think we would have been able to, to, to make a bigger splash with that yep. line. Yep, I think so, the, too. Uh, the Ultraverse Gold uh, Hollow Fory. Wow, look at that. Huh? Very nice. <laughs> there was a some pretty, little boy. There was some pretty awesome uh, Ultra Force Gold Hologram. Yeah, that's, this is a cool one. That's amazing. You just jump it's off cool. It, it's cool to see George Perez's artwork translated that way. You can never go wrong with George Perez. Oh, yeah. Look, and the bad guy in the Perez. background and stuff. It, it's just a really cool looking cover, really cool book overall. And another one that I really enjoyed was also one that you guys talked about earlier sludge. in the panel was Sludge. That's right. Um, Gerber basically just took some of the ideas probably that's been simmering for forever since Man Thing and threw it in a book of a, another muck type monster. Which is not a not a hard stretch. Well, you, you know, he you he really it. relished the challenge of bouncing his ideas off of Man Thing, and then having him go in a completely different direction for Sludge. That was right. part of the, that was part of the appeal to him. Mm -hmm. It was like he knew that people would sort of go, oh yeah Sludge that's Man Thing it, right right that's Swamp Thing right, and then he was like, but watch watch what I'm going to do because mm -hmm. it's not going to be anything like that. And it was he was just the most one of those uh, highly inventive writers. I just really loved working with. with I did too. With, with he's uh, he one of my Steve. favorite guys, just to, yeah. just as a guy. Yeah, and he was just a great guy to to, to be around. A, a huge heart. 
Yeah, I remember sitting around the table though at the Elderverse conference, and we'd come up with an idea. He would thought it was dumb, and he would just he'd put his head down. Yeah. And he, just, he would just shake. He's like, yeah, well, no, he, 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 no, he, we can't do the that. The shaking he, would, would would build up to right. momentum. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he he would reject ideas really fast. A little too fast sometimes. Oh yeah, well, but we kept them in the Elderverse, but Steve just didn't like them. That's all.